Okay, I'm calling this meeting on March 13th at 11.07 of the RTM Rules Committee Technology Subcommittee. And I'm uh, calling the meeting to order. And um, first thing is to approve the prior minutes. I have a motion to um, approve the prior minutes. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Mark and Monica. Um, are there any changes to the prior minutes or discussion things? Everybody good? Okay, then shall we vote? All in favor? Okay, that's done. Great. Um, so the next topic is the distribution of information to RTM members. That's the 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 use of um, the allowing of skipping the mailing of warnings and resolutions. So where that is, is Frank and his committee are looking into a resolution and discussing it with legal um, about changing the audience ordinances so they match up between the minutes and the, the warnings and resolutions. The second thing he's looking at included in that same um, ordinance is the requirement that you put this information in the newspaper. And and as he said, you know, times change, things move. So as long as we're looking at the ordinance, let's look at that also. Is it still a state requirement that it be published in a newspaper? Uh, so that Jeremy said at the PZ and H meeting, um, it, it for planning and zoning, it is still a requirement to put things in the newspaper. But there is discussion in this session to um, uh, uh, to do away with that. Okay. And so he's just trying to stay on top and he's using this as a timing to do that. So that's that piece that he'll report to the rules committee and we'll get that piece. What Seth said to me was that we should have some sort of statement that rules, you know, can vote on or, you know, to focus the conversation of one piece is allowing it to happen, which is what TGSNA is doing. Our piece on this was to say, should we do it? Should we allow people to opt out? And what's the language on that? So um, I think the one thing I want to clear with the see if we're all or where, where we are with whether the, the, I think we all agree that the idea of starting it with the new session makes sense starting it with the preferences, the preference sheet makes sense. Um, so, uh, correct. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay. So the, the next piece was whether we want the preference sheet if somebody doesn't fill out a preference sheet, if the preference sheet can say yes or no, what do I want or do I not want it? You know, do I want to get the mailing or not? So the yes or no is easy on the preference sheet. But if somebody doesn't do a preference sheet or somebody comes in new or something else happens or doesn't fill it out, what's going to be our default? Um, the default would be to what, to, that they're, they're going to get it both ways. I would agree. Monica, Mark? You know, unless they update their, unless she reaches out and says, we don't have a preference sheet from you and has the person at a later time fill out the preference sheet because they may, they may not, they may, not many people miss the organization meeting, but it does happen. So, 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 so what you're have, saying is the preference is a preference to opt out. And so if someone doesn't make a preference, they've opted in by default. Yeah, I guess it, it hinges on how we word the op, the option on the preference sheet. Well, that was so that is sort of the statement that I thought we would pull together. We don't have to do it as a group, but I wanted to get and I'll happy to draft something, send it out, have everybody edit it. But what Seth asked is for us to have something to put on the table of this is what you know is this as a rules committee what we agree should happen. Um, or they may choose not to do it at all and say everybody's going to get the mailings, whatever. But just so it can move quickly, like here's the resolution fr from Frank on, on what we need to do for the ordinance. Here's a, here's a statement from us on this is how we want to go ahead. And does rules agree we want to go ahead? So we've agreed that we want them to have the option on the um, preference sheet. And the default is that people get the mailing. Is that pretty clear? Is that in agreement? Yeah, I, I actually Monica? would prefer that they not, but not, I'm not, I don't feel strongly about it as long as there's a choice. So I, I, I can go with, with, with the majority. Well, I mean, the, the default is that, the, the default is you're opted into both. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's a question of whether or not you want to opt out of in writing. Right. Uh, mailing. I mean, mailing. Yeah. Yep. Monica, that works. Good? 
that works. I find that as being consistent with the other um, uh, environmental initiatives in town. You have the option to opt into composting. We don't make people compost. You have the option to recycle your batteries. We don't make people bring their batteries oh, okay. and separate them. You have the option to recycle your paint. So it's consistent. You know, the default is do nothing. Um, so that, in that regard, it's consistent with the other environmental initiatives. Lois, I, I have a more general question. Okay. What you're asking us to present to the rules, to the rules committee, are you asking us to write up something that um, is, kind of comes before what Frank is doing? Are you saying the tech committee suggests that we do X and Y and, and to um, formalize that Frank is writing up the resolution. Is that is that where we are in the process? No, or am I, I... I believe that Frank's going to do it anyway. The ordinance right. should be consistent. So and what the is or, that... the, the ordinance just allows um, us to not mail. In other words, it, it gives an option of whether you want to mail or not. It's a choice that the town gets to make. Okay. Okay. And so it, the okay. purpose of, of this is to say, with that choice, this is how we'd like to implement this going forward. Now the rules committee can decide they don't wanna change anything and, and everything just gets mailed automatically. It's not a decision people need to make. They just wanna mail everything. Mail the warning and the resolutions to everyone, okay? okay. I, I just feel like whatever Frank does is going to have this information incorporated in it. Frank allows it to happen, our, yeah. our, our statement is a decision on whether we want it to happen, whether yeah, we want it, it to has, change. Yeah, I don't think it changes what Frank's doing. Okay, okay. Is that clear? And, and Monica, thanks for pointing that out because it needs to be clear. I mean, Frank just says, you have the option to mail. You have to distribute electronically, but you have the option to mail, which is the okay. way the minutes are, okay? Okay, what Frank is doing, do, do we as an RTM need to vote on that? Yes. Yeah, we do, change right? Your, yes, it's a change to the ordinance. Okay. Do we as an RTM need to vote on what we're talking about here, which is the change? I don't know. I mean, that'll come up in the rules meeting. Okay. okay. I, I don't think so because I think it's just a pro process. It's not a law. It's not, a, it's not in the ordinance. It's a, a way the, the, the town clerk's office functions in, in support of the RTM. So I think rules can make that decision. I don't think it needs to go to the RTM. I don't think that we should make that decision. I think it should be made by the rules committee. Okay, and the decision we're making is this whole opt-in, opt-out portion. Right. Giving people the, the option to opt out of getting mailings of warnings and resolutions. Okay. And, and the methodology that we're recommending is using the preference sheets. Okay, I just feel like you know, co coming from writing an ordinance for the bag ban, that these these are all elements that Frank will incorporate in his resolution. It won't be super wordy, but I'm pretty sure he'll cover all of this. So I'm just trying to figure out why. He won't cover preference sheets and he won't okay. cover the decision on whether, how we want to handle opting in or opting out. He just allows it to happen. So the bag ban was very different. The bag ban was a rule you know, a law, a, a, you will do this. We're not saying anybody will do anything. It's sort of like putting, I think Mark's example was really good um, with the ability, whatever, I forget what you call it, but you know, when you can- The composting. The composting. You know, we didn't need a, a rule. We didn't need a law. We didn't need anything changed to do that. They just provided that. In our okay. case, we can't just provide it because it is a law that says you have, an ordinance that just says you have to do such and such. So okay. what we can do is change the ordinance and then give people the option to do it. Now with the minutes, they just did it. Um, you know, they just stopped mailing the, the minutes. They didn't give people a choice of that. Okay. Okay. And so what you want to do right now is gather information today and you're going to write something up that we're going to take a look at. That, yeah. That's okay. Okay. And so I'm sorry. Okay. So go back to where you were. Sorry for the interruption. Well, I think, you know, I think I have enough information as long as, okay. we're, as long as we've had this conversation, we understand the purpose of what we're doing is to put something on the table to say, assuming we pass the ordinance and it is okay to with, to not mail out warnings and, and, and resolutions. How do we want to implement that? 
And this is our suggestion. Our suggestion is that we're going to use, start it with the next RTM session, that we're going to use the preference sheets to have a, has a statement on there. Do you want to receive um, warnings and, and resolutions by mail? Yes or no. And, and we can edit that statement. We don't have to do it as a group, but you know, think about it. And then that would be the statement. And is this what, and the default would be if, if somebody does not have an, a position on this on file, the default would be they get the mailings. Okay. I think that it, when you get to, when we get to that part, I think it should be two, you, you check, there are two boxes, you check one yeah. or you can check two, but I don't think it's a yes or I think, you know, seeing how much people have, <laughs> how many people have a problem with the number thing that I think just, you know, give a box. This is what I want. I think that's okay. good. It would be a box. Yes. And a box. No. And you pick one. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No, I'm on the same right. page with you. This is not fill in the blank. Right. Okay. 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 Well, so, I, yeah. So, so, so if you put a box, yes or no. Then type in done. It, and if yeah. they don't check one, now and they get the, the mail. They get the so mail. It needs to be clear on the preference that the defaults, if they don't select one, is that they'll, they'll, they'll get. Uh, I, that yeah. works. That works. That's Let's fine. leave it at yes or no, because otherwise you're saying, otherwise you really are saying, do you want to opt out and you should check no? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Let's get them clear of decision, or if they skip it, then they just get it the hell with them, and that's the way. It's I want that's, it. That's now. like when we vote not to reject the, the contracts. Right. right. <laughs> We're voting not to reject the contract. Yeah. We really know what we're voting. Just tell me, am I supposed to say yes or no, right? <laughs> yeah, double negative, yeah. Yes. I will say going back to the preference that um, there was, um, I, I tracked down one preference sheet, but people, you know, I think people, people get them in or the district chairs yeah. track them down because yeah, yeah. so I, I think that you get pretty much 100% on that. Yeah. You, you do. Otherwise, you don't get put on a committee. You, you right. Need a I mean, you right. can verbally say, put me on something, but the district chair says, put it in writing. It has yeah. to be in writing. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So so I think it's a great, I don't remember whose idea it was. It's a brilliant idea, but that makes it pretty straight. That was mine. No. Well, it was brilliant. It was, it was not it was brilliant. It had to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Lisa was really thrilled with the idea, um, you know, because it's pretty straightforward. She knows exactly what to do and she has documentation of what's happening. So, and it's a timed factor. You know, most of it's going to happen all at once. It's not something where people dribble. Right. In. They can change it, but as a, as, a, as a rule, okay, this is when I do this, here we go. So, you know, I think it's got all the making, markings of a, a reasonable shot and uh, a lot easier than the bag ordinance, Monica. <laughs> yeah, the irony is after this, after this uh, uh, pandemic and getting, uh, getting pickup, We've got hundreds of paper bags around because every order comes oh, with eight bags. And it might be three items in a bag, but every order comes with eight bags and you just fold them up. And, you know, it, but they're, 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 they're I must have a hundred paper bags. Well, now I know where to go because I, I started, I've gone back, I go to the stores, but go late at night. So there's no one there. And I've been using my own bags and I'm like, I'm running, I'm going to run out of bags. So I know where to go. I'm like, <laughs> Anytime, I, I'm actually my. I, I they're all recyclable. I keep meaning to take them back to Stop and Shop, but I haven't asked if they can take them back to use I in, a COVID, they, in a COVID. I'm assuming era. they can't. Does that, Monica? Do you know? I don't think they know. You the can bring bag, your you, you can now bring your own reusable bag. Yeah. Um. You they just they that, they yeah. just ask you to to bag it yourself. But you know what? I've seen checkers bag them for people too. So. The bag band. Yeah, I'm 99 percent sure. Had the bag band been, hadn't the bag band been suspended by the governor's orders for the uh, for the pandemic? Yes, but you can. But they also had suspended um, in town. It, you weren't allowed to bring your own bag. No, now you are allowed to bring your own. Bag. No. Um. So. The discussion, I'd, I'd like to move that this discussion for the RTM meeting and use of GoToWebinar, we move to executive session. Okay. Anybody opposed to that? Do we need a motion for that? All right, I'll make a motion that we move the discussion on the RTM meeting and the go to web, use of GoToWebinar into the executive session. Second. I'll second that. Okay, Monica. All in favor? 
No discussion. Okay. Too bad, guys. At okay. Eleven twenty-two. Let the record reflect. <laughs> Okay, and I guess I want to move up one more thing. I mean, I ordered these under the assumption that time was of the essence, and I wanted to make sure Mike had his, his oar into a bunch of these things. But um, so that's why the order is, is, was out. Normally, executive session is a lesson. So I'd like to move up before we go into executive session. I'd like to make a motion to move up the discussion on the Selectman's Technology Steering Committee to be the next topic of conversation. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Okay, so let's talk about the Selectman's um, Steering Committee mission statement. Um, I sent it to everybody, it's pretty short. Um, I hope you, I, I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but do you want me to bring it up for any reason? I can no, do that. No, I got it. You got yeah. everyone has it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I found an inconsistency in one, two, three, four. In paragraph four, the committee will not be involved in day-to-day -day management with the third from the bottom, which says the committee will review department requests for technology, hardware, and software purchases and investments, including upgrades, which seems like they are getting involved in the day-to-day -day operations. Um. I think those are two different, I think it's meant to be two different issues. Um, mm, yeah, I think I agree with Lois. I think the I can understand uh, uh, if they're if they're going to do a uh, uh, an accounting uh, a credit card system, you know. But you know, it's it's how 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 deep in the woods does that third paragraph in the bottom go? I think it's more like a proposal or a request, like a budgeting item. And yeah, I, I look at it as spending money as opposed to day-to-day -day operations. Well, and I think it might, might to, to, to your point though, I think it might cover, you know, have they looked at the staffing and the implementation Did, did you say we went into executive session? Are we on pause no. for recording? We're, We're still in being recorded. Okay. We're not in executive session. Right. Okay. Um, but we can, if you want. No, that's, no, that's right. Okay. So I think, I think it's in the interpretation of, I think your point is well taken. I don't think that's the intent of that statement. Um, I think the intent is to like, they, IT runs the department, they handle stuff. The steering committee doesn't get involved in that. But from a st strategy standpoint, what, you know, the approval of software and hardware and, um, and I hope um, the technology requests for technology, hardware, software purchases and investments, including upgrades, will report their recommendations to the Board of Selectmen on such requests. Just whether that the things have been thought through and do they make sense? Um, I'm hoping that they do it at a certain budget level, but. Uh, my, my only last point is, is I, um, I assume that the three members of the public at large are going to be the three key people who have the experience because a lot of the other members of the committee uh, are line people that may not have much um, IT background, just have an IT need. Well, I think the member from the RTM is going to be somebody that has good background. Yeah, the, the hope is that we can find somebody. So I'm yeah. um, just, I think I can do this on the recording um, and not speaking out of turn on this, um, that the I spoke to Seth about the this part of it and the intention, and obviously it can change, it was just a quick conversation, but he will decide what we're gonna really do, um, that he would propose it similar to, I, I think, I don't know if it was ethics or something else, where you say, this is what we're looking for from the, somebody in the RTM. If you have the credentials that match this kind of position, please let Seth know. And what he, and then they would, we would, they would present to the RTM and say, this is who I am. This is, you know, one of these three people, one, this is the person we want as an RTM to be on the committee. Um, so the RTM would then vote. And if he, his suggestion was, if there were others that they would be, we would submit them to the selectmen to be included as three members of the public. So that Great. anybody that comes forward should have a real opportunity to participate. Yeah, well, I think that's great. 
they certainly did a great job on Oxridge and and the um, uh, garage in selecting members of the community to be on the committee, and and they are the anchors of those committees uh, of the Oxridge and previously the the you know the, they were the real professionals, uh, you know who and everybody else kind of filled in. The, and the, the hope is that there's somebody in our hundred member body that really would be capable of doing this and well and wants to do it. Yeah. And if there are others in the RTM or in the public, and it's, a, it's also a way of getting the information out to the public, you know, for people on the RTM, just if they know friends and neighbors and things that they think would be good on this, to get that information out that these positions are available and the town would really appreciate their volunteering. No, I, sticking with the committee, I had, um, was thinking, first of all, they don't have any mention of the, t the duration of the, you know, the time. Is this a one year commitment, a three year? It, it's ongoing. It, oh, okay. So, well, okay. That's super. Usually for committees, they, well, the it, it, advisory committees, uh, at least our Darien TV 79 advisory committees um, are now um, on a one year cycle. So you have to ask to be renewed um, at the end of every year for the next year. It's not automatic. Mm -hmm. And that was changed a couple of years ago where that we had two year term, alternating two year terms and it changed two or three years ago. So every member of the committee has to ask to be reappointed at the end of the year and the board of selectmen um, make the reappointments uh, in either December or January. Okay. Yeah. So if this is an advisory committee, I assume the appointment, it falls under the same thing. It is. It is an advisory committee. So there's what you're saying is there's standard, there's a standard approach to volunteers and, and committee assignments. And my understanding is that that is the policy for all advisory okay. committees. Okay, good. As opposed to elected commissions. And one other thing on, you know, I thought about the fact that we had asked to be ex officio and we're not. And I thought that that was fine from a standpoint that this is a permanent committee. I don't know that our committee is permanent. So I think when the committee is, <laughs> you like that, Mark, huh? <laughs> you laughed. By your um, tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there's that much work to do, um, except it's fun to catch up, but you know, certainly not something we need to do every Saturday. Um, Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Forever, we're gonna meet every Saturday at 11. We're on, who's bringing the donuts, right? Um, but anyway, the um, I, I think that we will ask when the committee gets formed if we can be ex officio for as long as we're in existence or however Seth wants to do it. You know, and if he, wa if he wants to appoint somebody, well, it doesn't make sense. He's got, we've got an RTM member on the committee. So the question is for us with our responsibility, if we can be ex officio, that's fine. But if we no longer exist and we, there isn't the need for have us do things, then we don't need to be on an ongoing basis. So I just, I didn't, um, Asked to have any changes made to that. Well, Mark, Mark went to almost every one of the of the uh, garage committee meetings, and you weren't you weren't because you were running public works. Then you weren't an, you weren't a, you weren't an ex officio member. You just went as the head of the public works committee and observed right. almost every meeting. So, but, right. but they sent you emails on when the meetings were right. They did. Yeah, and that's 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 all, what it really means to me is that one of us will get the, the emails and know that it's happening. And it's yeah, a way- I think I was getting the emails as chair of public works at the time. I, but Okay, well then yeah. maybe that, that would work for this and it doesn't have to be yeah. official. So um, I don't know, we'll see. But so, so that's the thoughts. Um, are there any other comments? Um, my, last com my last comment on the committee yeah. thing is, I just wanna make sure two things. One, the three members of the public could, could in theory, also be three members of RTM. So we could have four RTM members on there. Okay. And then the other thing is, um, you know, when I added this up, if it works out and we do have three members at large, that puts 13 on this. But if we have two members at large, then you don't have a majority vote on things. So uh, you know, this is minutia and I'm sure they'll figure it out. But I did it did occur to me. That they should yeah. have either one or three, so they have an yeah, option yeah. for voting. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll draw, I'll I'll send Kate a note as just a, a couple of comments. Okay. Good. All right. And then and then so then Lois, you're thinking that every year 
we look for a, a new volunteer from the RTM. Yeah, that gets. I don't, I don't really. Oh, we, know. We're on actually. We we've been on on, on the our TV seventy nine. Everybody's been reappointed for the last since they went to that every year. It's just a pro. It's just a pro forma. So they, I they, wouldn't think we would. It's not like the ethics commission. I wouldn't view it like the ethics commission, but that'll be up to Seth. I mean, that's a good point, Monica, and I'll raise it. You know, when you figure this out, how you want to run it. I, I understand as a first selection basis, which is great. One, there's the selection process and two, it gets the information out to everybody, which I think is essential. Um, but the, the piece of, are we gonna do this every year like the ethics commission? I don't think so. I, that's up to Seth really, but I wouldn't suggest we do that. I think somebody's involvement is with the hope of continuing like your advisory committee might, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that need that should be clarified, you yeah. know. I mean, then you run into somebody wants to do it, but they don't have the opportunity because the other person is just re-upped every year. I mean, there are still the, there are other members. You know, there's the public. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, Mike, if somebody wanted to get on your committee, what would happen? We have a we have a we'd have to go to the board to to um, raise the number of committee members we have just like they're going to what which one or did we just reduce the number from 13 to 9 uh the um and monuments yeah we and and we have an odd number on purpose so that we don't have tie votes but good but that's point. all i have okay that sounds great i will um, go over stuff with Seth and, and our and our nominees technically come from the two town the Republican Town Committee and the Democratic Town Committee. When we have an opening, we go I go to both chairs, and they make a recommendation, and then the Board of Selectmen interview the recommendation and approve it before approve them to uh, go on the committee. And in line with what you're saying, Monica, what happens if the person's been on the committee and no longer is part of the RTM? Yeah, I really think that the RTM should stay out of this. It, it's it it's a lot of work for, and it's uh, there are too many undecideds for me. If you're looking for, um, you know, we can we can spread the word, and you can be an RTM member, but you are not representing the RTM on this. You're well, an individual at large. I know, but Seth was pretty clear that he wanted the RTM. To, to, to have a representation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Also, I mean, what that also does is say that if we don't exist anymore, then the RTM has a position on, you know, is involved, knows what's going on. It can report back to the committees and, and whatever else is happening. Um, okay. The other, the other option would be to have one of the committees that's already established. I don't know where it would fall under, but this could be under their realm of things to watch and that way the rtm would would know what was going on from whatever that committee was reporting yeah but i think we need to look at it in terms of somebody contributing to what's going on too it's not just we can watch it anyone can watch it but the idea of the member is to really have the technical expertise to add to the the town and and there are some people in the past who've talked about you know credit card collections and other kinds of things. And, and the purpose of the committee is really to give the town um, people that can help. Mm -hmm. and no, I know, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I'm just thinking long-term, this one person from the RTM, if we could put it under the umbrella of a committee, then that committee will, that this will always be an item for them to consider. I don't know, let's just pick on Mac. So it goes in public health and safety. So public health and safety, this is one of the things that they monitor going forward. That committee doesn't go away. The member that was the liaison with the IT on the town side might change, but the committee's gonna be there every year. We've done that with uh, on Blight where Michael gave us an update at the last PZ and H meeting on the Blight committee. And he's gonna, it's the first time he's ever, he, he took over from Liz um, but Liz was moving to different committees, but the plan is for every year, he gives our committee an update on blight. Now, and is he part of your committee or not? Yeah, he's part of our committee. Okay. But if he moved off your committee, would it be a responsibility? Uh, it, else it, it was a coincidence that he was on that committee and he, okay. 
appointed or put his name forward. And I can't remember if he was elected or appointed when Liz uh, Bacon um, resigned after two years. She wanted to do it for two years and move on to something else. And so I can't remember if he volunteered and then was appointed or he was elected. Within I an RTM. He, yeah, was he was, it, it was through an RTM meeting. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I think he was elected. Technically, he was elected because I think he might. He was. Been, he was by the full RTM. Volunteer. Okay. Um, I, you know what? I, I think we should think, you know, if you want, I'll talk to, I'll talk to Seth also, but I, I think maybe that eliminates a lot of problems. Well, to me, it limits, it limits the, the choice of the person. I mean, the person could be on planning and zoning and be a really good tech person, but the, the committee that in charge shouldn't be planning and zoning. Um, well, we could, we could incorporate that into the job description that's underneath that committee. So if you are good at that, you, that would be your first choice on your preference sheet. I mean, I, we should let Seth think about it. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, okay. I, don't, I don't end up on the same end result, but I think it's certainly important that Seth thinks about how he wants, all, wants it all to work. Okay. okay. Good choice. Okay. Okay, good. All right, we're good in that. Yep. Then I would like um, I would like to make a motion to move into executive session to talk about security issues and regarding voting. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Okay. Well, um, any discussion? Actually, the motion is to should be to discuss security issues, right? We're not supposed to talk about why. <laughs> so um, let's have a motion. Sorry, let's correct the motion to say security issues. Okay, um, and um, is there any conversation? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thanks. I'm going to stop recording. Whoops. <laughs>